Now question 12 in the question book takes up quite a bit of room so I've had to slim it down for these worksheets. So here we go with question 12. It says the diagram shows a large cone with a base diameter of 30 and a height of 60. The large cone is cut to produce a smaller cone called P and a frustrum. Now that is the actual proper name for the bottom part of a cone when the top's been, top's been taken away. It's called a frustrum. And the question says calculate the volume of the frustrum. So basically it's the volume of this large cone minus the volume of this small cone. The volume of the frustrum is the volume of the large cone which you could call pi r squared h a third of minus the volume of the small cone which is a third pi r squared again but it's a different value of r and a different h so maybe I put a capital H there so the volume of the frustrum is the volume of the large cone minus the volume of the small cone and the volume of a cone might be on the formula sheet if not you'll need to learn that a third pi r squared h is the volume of a cone. It is a calculator paper so we're going to have a third multiplied by pi multiplied by r squared. Now this we have to be a little bit careful and think about it. The diameter of the whole cone is 30 therefore the radius is 15. Pi a third pi r squared h and the height is 60 so that will work out the volume of the large cone. Volume of the small cone, volume of the cone is a third times pi times r squared times h. r squared this time is the radius there which is 5 and the height is the 20 there. So once you've got that then it is a calculator exercise and typing things in carefully. Now although you can just type the whole lot in and write the answer, I would recommend that you type that part in. I don't want to run out of time this time if I can help it, so I'll just write that down. Minus, type in that one. And subtract them. and get an answer of, I think, a 13613.56. And it actually says to one decimal place. So therefore one decimal place is 0.56. decimal place. So that's the answer. But I've forgotten something, haven't I? I've forgotten the units. And we've got to mention that every time, just in case it's the question that has the one mark for the units. Now what marks are there there? Now there's three marks all together. One mark for the answer and two marks for the working out. So if you go wrong somewhere and you show this line, then you get one of the marks and that working out there. As with all calculator questions, I do this more than once just to make sure I've got it right. OK, that's the volume of a cone, one third pi r squared h. Let's move on to part b. Now, sometimes part a and b are connected in questions. And sometimes they're completely unconnected. And this is one of those cases where they're completely unconnected. It's like a brand new question. We're told this is a different frustrum. And this different frustrum has a base diameter of 3q, a top diameter of q, 
and the height of the thrust room is P. And we're told that the formula for working out the curved surface area of this thrust room, in other words, the area around here, missing out the bottom and missing out the top, is here. Now where this formula came from, we don't really mind, because we don't need to use it at all. It's purely a question of changing the subject of the formula. So really, where this formula came from, and that it's attached to this frustrum, has nothing to do with it at all, as far as working it out is concerned. OK. As with all rearrangements of formulas, there's more than one way of starting. To get rid of a square root sign, you need to square. But I wouldn't do it just yet. Personally, I divide both sides of the equation by 2 pi q first. And in fact, I'm not saying that's absolutely necessary. You could make your first step squaring. But I think there's less likely to be a slip up if you approach it like this first. Divide both sides by 2 pi q. Now I'm going to square. When I square a square root, the square root sign disappears. So I'm going to square this side, and this is what I end up with. Now when I square this side, again there are so many different ways of writing this, the safest way is to just copy it down again, and put a bracket around it, and a square, saying I'm squaring all of this. Now we're trying to make H the subject, and there's no H there, so I've made a typing mistake, which is extremely impressive, isn't it? It should say make P the subject. It does on your, on your book, but uh, it didn't here, so that was good. Sorry about that. So I'm trying to make P the subject. So I need to, in fact, move the Q. So I'll subtract the Q from this side. If I carry on down here, I'm going to run out of space, so I'll work over here now. So I'm going to subtract Q squared from this, and that will give me P squared. To get rid of a square root sign, you square it. To get rid of a squared, you square root. So the final answer is to take this, and square root it. So make sure your square root sign goes over the whole lot like that. Now if, if you've tried this paper before, like I hope you have, you could have an answer that looks very different to that, but still be right. This answer can appear in so many different guises. It depends if you remove the bracket. If you remove the bracket, you'd have a squared, a 4, a pi squared, and a q squared. And there are other things you could do to rearrange it. But the examiner is not going to mind what variation you've got as long as yours is right. There are three marks there for different stages of the manipulation. So there could be one mark for dividing both sides by the, the um, 2 pi q, one mark for the squaring, and one mark for the square rooting. Question 12.